Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Those type of things for the software. I do a lot of training with it as well. So I've uh, today we're going to be going through a class that's a little bit of a new class uh, for me. We're going to be talking a little bit about how to system test, particularly like the ISC Forex options and how to find good trading methodologies and limit risk and reward in that. So it should be a very, very fun class. Like if you guys have questions during the class, uh, feel free to go ahead and ask them. If I don't see it um, uh, or if I don't answer it, it's because I didn't see it and go ahead and ask it again. So. Welcome to the event today, and I uh, appreciate you guys coming in. Um, if you have questions, uh, chat them in, and uh, we'll go ahead and start from there. If any of you guys have seen me present or anybody from Metastock present before, you kind of know what the next slide is going to be. <laughs> the demonstration today is designed to instruct you on using Metastock, the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the, uh, within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented at the workshop today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Equus shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, trading strategy, or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things just to add to that. I am um, personally not licensed to give investment advice. My goal today is not to give investment advice, but really to kind of show you how to use the tools and all of that kind of stuff. Um, we have a pretty good software program. And what we're going to focus on today uh, in the software program is going to be uh, using uh, systems, uh, testing systems to decide you know, what might be work worthwhile for you. So that's going to be kind of the whole goal. We we're going to set up a little bit of a, a methodology test and a what if test. Okay. I want to, before, before we get to that, I want to kind of talk a little bit about our history um, and personally my history with the company. I've been there for about 14 years. Um, it's a great company to work for, and um, it was started back in 1982 by a gentleman by the name of Steve Akalis. Uh Steve actually started it in Utah. Um, it, it, as a comp as a as a platform or a way to, to provide some of the technology to individual traders that was available to institutional traders at the time. So um, back in 1995, this was about two, three years before I started. Uh, we were bought by Reuters, who is now Thomson Reuters, um, and that's been a very very good fit. Um, a lot of people are aware of the Reuters brand and the Reuters name for their news coverage. But it's actually a pretty large company. There's about $19 billion a year in revenue. 90% uh, of that is actually the revenue um, that they associate with um, sales of their news and their information to institutions. Uh, it's a division of the company called Sales and Trading, and that drives 90% of the revenue. So we've been able to – they obviously have taken Metastock. They lease it for a lot higher cost into their institutional traders. Um, we've also taken their data feed starting in 2005, and we've been selling that. So we're really kind of the only place as, an, as a retail trader you can go and get really good news, really good information, really good uh, fundamentals, really good earnings, really good calendar directly from Reuters. Uh, we're pretty proud of what we've done with the company. We've uh, sold over 310,000 copies of the software uh, since we started the company. And a couple of uh, the other things that we're proud of is we've been actually rated number one in stocks and commodities for literally like 18 years in a row um, for our software. So we're very, very happy with it. Um, we're going to talk a lot today, and, and very soon I'm just going to get straight into the software package, and we're going to kind of show you around. But um, these are really kind of what we're going to go through today. We're going to spend a lot of time in the system tester or the enhanced system tester. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of, of time in the expert advisor uh, showing you how to actually get alerts on your chart and things like that. So today, really, my whole point is to kind of help you understand how you can use Metastock. If you're interested in trading ISE instruments, how you could use Metastock to help you put together a good game plan around trading. 
and how you could use it to understand, well, if I was trading these particular option pairs or anything, we covered just about anything in the world, how effective that would be for you. So, and how to kind of get some advice on how to do that. Let's go ahead and uh, give me just a few seconds. I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint. Um, that's about the extent we'll stay in the PowerPoint slide. The rest of the presentation is going to be in uh, Metastock. So let me go ahead and share my desktop with you. This will take a second. Okay. And you should be able to see uh, my screen. You should be able to see my Metastock uh, open. Um, basically, I don't have any charts that are open. And um, usually I'll, I'll spend a couple minutes just showing you how to apply indicators and um, showing you how easy it is to change between time frames and that kind of stuff in the software and how to open up charts. However, I, I want to jump, I'm going to do it a little bit differently today uh, because I always run out of time anyway. What I want to do is I want to jump straight into a methodology test and kind of show you how you would set that up in Metastock. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our enhanced system tester right here. Okay. And with Metastock, this is one of our, our core tools, one of our power tools. It allows us to go in and it says, okay, if I've been trading using a mechanical method or a technical system over the last one year or two years or 20 years, um, our data goes back to your, the early 70s on most instruments, how well would that system have performed? If I took every trade, buy and sell, and e exactly analyze that, how would I be doing? Okay, so what I'm going to do is we've got a bunch of systems that are built into the program. And I've already selected quite a few of those that we're going to kind of go in and do a simulation on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on New Simulation here. And I'm just going to, this, this is just going to confirm the selection, so we've, what we've got. I'm avoiding um, systems that are going to take a long time to test. We're going to test daily bars, so I'm going to skip the first uh, hour breakout system. But I'm also avoiding some of the tests that have like optimized variables and those type of things because, um, well, they take a little bit longer to test, and I want to be able to show you some results and how you could evaluate the performance of an instrument on a chart. So let me go ahead and click on Next here. Okay. And what I've done, uh, just to kind of prepare for this event, and it only took me just a few minutes, is I've actually come in here, and I've made in my, here I've got a few tabs. This is the open dialog box, or the, in this case, the ad securities dialog box. And here I've got like a, 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 a quite a few different options that I can select from. I could go into Quote Center, and you'll notice we have uh, Futures for North America, South America, Europe, Asia. Of course, we've got Forex, and we've got stocks grouped by sector. So I've got everything pretty well organized, but what I've done is I wanted to be able to focus on ISE instruments today. So I took a, just a few minutes, typed in all the symbols, and I actually put together a list of the ISE instruments that are available. So if I double click on that list, what I'm going to do is it's going to come up and, and just list you know, the seven or eight uh, different securities that I added to that. So. I'm just going to select all of these because I'm going to, I want to test all of them. I'm going to go ahead and click on Open here. Okay. Now, I want to point out one thing really, really specifically right here. Um, I, <coughs> with Metastock, we have a very, very kind of advanced system tester. There's a lot of system te testing platforms out available on the market. But you'll notice we just selected probably about 30 different systems. We just selected about 10 security pairs, and we're going to test those all at the same time. And with a lot of the platforms I've seen, they have the capability of testing multiple systems, but they can't really give you a good, clear understanding of how well they would do under a basket of securities or a basket of FX instruments, as we're doing here. Okay. So um, again, it kind of just gives you a clearer view or a clearer understanding of kind of what goes into the test and how it would work well. Right here, I can select my dates. Um, if I wanted to, I could come in and say, well, I'll test everything from 2006 to 2008. And then I could go in and uh, evaluate how the system tests performed up to that point. And then do some forward testing, take a look at the charts and see exactly how it would have played out since then. Um, or I could say, OK, I want to use the last 250 bars 
um, and we are doing we do count them in bars. So I could say, well, I want to test 500 bars, or I wanted to test a thousand bars. Uh, I want to keep the test a little bit short today. So what we're going to do is we're going to just test about a year of data, which would be about 250 bars. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK with that. We are testing a daily periodicity, but you can do intraday if you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Okay. And here's where I can kind of go in and set up my trading parameters. So what I'm going to say is I could say right here points only test. And then if it got in at a, uh, on a specific instrument at 10 and it got out at 15, for example, we'd register a five-point gain. Um, and then if we got in at 15 and we got back out of, at 13, and it, it would be minus two points. And it would just keep track of how many points we had got gained or lost. Okay. Um, and that's what we call a points-only test. I'm not going to do that, though. What I'm going to say is I'm going to start with an initial equity figure. Let's say we have about $10,000 in our hypothetical trading account. We want to trade that to see how well it would or would not perform in the market. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and test $10,000. Okay? And then uh, I have a couple of... Hello? <laughs> okay. And then I have a couple of options here, like I could say, okay, I want to trade 80 shares at a time or 80 numbers uh, in terms of numbers of units. Or I could say I want to trade on a, based on a transaction cost. Every time I trade, I want to trade $800. Uh, and then the software, basically what it would do is, and it's doing its simulation, it would go in and, and it would trade, figure out exactly how many shares it would be need to buy to get exactly $800, buy that amount of shares, sell it when it when it went t was time to sell it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do percent of available equity. Okay? And what and I'm going to leave that at 80%. And what that means is if I start with my account uh, being $10,000, my first trade is going to be 80% of that. So it would be $8,000. Okay? So it's uh, the available equity that we have in our account. So if we grow that to say $20,000 and our, our trade size will be $16,000. We're always going to be risking about 80% of our equity when we trade. Now that's just the number I'm going to use for the test. I want you to understand how that works because if you want to try Metastock, you'll want to be able to test a value that might be realistic for what you're doing. Okay? Here I can say long, I can say short. If I say long, it'll ignore all of the short opportunities and it'll just take long positions. If I say short, uh, long, uh, short, it'll do just the opposite. It'll only look to go short uh, on different trades. I'm going to go ahead and select that as both, so it'll take both bets that the stock will go or the instrument will go up, and bets that the instrument will go down. Very simple. If I click on more here, basically what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to calculate in commissions going to allow me to uh, set margin and interest requirements and uh, set the rate that I'd make if I was out of a trade. And it'll also allow me to put in slippage so I could penalize myself for trading. Um, realistic market prices right here I've got checked. What that means, um, just so that you guys know, um, basically is that it's going to wait till the, I'm going to test daily bars. So this is the same uh, if it's 60 minute bars, but you'd just be waiting till the end of the 60 minute period or on the 30 minute bars, basically you'll be end, waiting till the end of the 30 minute period to go ahead and enter a trade. But on a daily basis, what we're going to do realistic means it's going to wait until the end of the bar and it's going to get you in the, as, clo at, as close to the open as, uh, price the next day. Okay. The ID being a lot of sig signals may fire off. It wants to wait until the very end of that bar and get you to in at a realistic price after that signal is fired off and confirmed by having the bar closed. So we're going to go ahead and leave that unrealistic. If you wanted to be adventurous, you could say, well, I'm always interested in buying the low and I want to sell at the high. That's something you could do. It's not realistic. Let's just go ahead and leave it at realistic market prices. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Okay. And we'll just do an ISE simulation. So right now I can name it. And I'll just name it ISE simulation. <laughs> so there we go. And I'll go ahead and start it. Okay. So now the software is going to go ahead and get to work for me. And it, it's going to take a couple minutes for it to begin the test. 
Now, while it's doing that, you'll see it's kind of churning through the numbers back in the corner. But basically, you'll see how it says MS-11 turtle hybrid system or CCI system. Basically, what it's going to do for us while it's going through these and it's picking up speed while it goes is it's going to take these trading methodologies that we include with the software. And you can make your own, and it's pretty easy to make your own. But it's going to tell us exactly how well those would have performed had we been trading it for the last 250 daily bars, which would be about a year. Okay, it's done. So let's take a look at the results and see what we have to see there. Okay, With, I was surprised. I ran this test just about five, ten minutes ago. And I was surprised as well. Uh, I'm going to sort these by the average net profit. Now remember, um, we're dealing with average. That's what, that, what I mean by that is we tested probably about 10 instruments, 10 ISE instruments against uh, probably about 30 systems. We did a total of about 300 tests. So what we're looking at right now is an average number. Uh, basically, this is a list of those systems that we tested. I've ranked them by profit. Uh, our most profitable over the last year trading was about a 12% gain over those 10 stocks or those 10 ISE instruments or whatever you had included in those tests. Okay, The second most profitable system would have been 11. And it's kind of given this an idea of based on kind of what we were testing, this is kind of the results that we would look at on average. Okay, So this bull power, bear power was the most profitable system, but it had about 73 trades on average. That's pretty frequent for just a year. That's going to be like, let's, well, 73 into 12. Um, that's that's going to be probably quite a few trades on a monthly basis for each different instrument. So that might not be something that you would want to look at. Uh, the next one down, we worked a lot less for. We only traded about six trades. On average, it was about 50-50 on trades for wins versus trades for loss but we had a, a little bit of a less of a gain on average, but we worked a lot less time for that. In other words, we were in the market a lot less. So already we can kind of take a look at these systems, and the next one down was 1,000, gained about 10% on average for all the stocks um, with 119 trades. So already we can start to take a look and evaluate these particular methodologies for what might work well for us. Okay. Let's go ahead and, uh, so far, the, out of the three or four that we've looked at, uh, I really like the Connors RSI system. So, because we had a low amount of trades, we weren't really turning in and out of, of positions. So I'm going to go ahead and take a closer look at that. What I do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the instrument, or the test that I want to look closer at, and I'll click on this little view button in the lower um, right-hand corner. So let me do that. Okay. And now, uh, instead of looking at an average, remember before we were looking at an average percent gain, now we're looking at uh, how well this particular methodology would have performed over the whole group of stocks. So we're just looking at the Connors RSI system. Here's a list of the different instruments that are here. Um, and uh, our most profitable uh, over the last year would have been about 16% with nine trades, five winners, four losers. Our next one would have been the peso index, followed by the British pound, followed by the yen FX. Uh, and uh, out of all of these systems, all of them did pretty well over the last year. Okay, and uh, only one of them, only one of that, one of those instruments actually lost money, which would have been the Australian dollar. So by by being able to test multiple securities against a system, I know that this one will work pretty well on ISE pairs. What I want to do now is kind of take a look at maybe the most profitable ones and, and, and really kind of evaluate those and take a closer look at them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the New Zealand Dollar Index, or the NZD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on View here. okay? And that's going to give us a, a full performance uh, report. okay? Remember we did 250 daily bars. okay? That was So that was April 19th, 2010 through April 12th of 2011. So that was about one year of data. Um, our profit was about 16 per, 1643, uh, which is about 16%. That's pretty good. 
annualized if we would have traded that for three more days of telling us we would have made about 17% on net. Now look at this. If we would have actually bought and held that instrument, we would have lost money. We would have lost $744.48. Okay, so I would say in this particular case, by buying and selling the security uh, or uh, the New Zealand ISE index, we would have done better by actually placing trades with it. Okay, uh, buy and hold performance was minus 7%. We made 17 percent, uh, or 16.75, I should say. So I would say that we're better off trading so far. This looks fairly good. Uh, our annualized buy and hold was almost minus 8 percent. So obviously, we did a little bit better than that. Okay, total trades. We only traded nine trades on this system. Uh, efficiency is a measure of how much money you make, um, and we are at 5.38 percent. Uh, right here, this is an important number to look at. What this means is every time we made a dollar, every time we lost one dollar in the market trading, we actually gained four dollars, three dollars and seventy-eight cents. Okay, so that's a measurement of how how well we did for our winners versus our losers. That's actually a pretty huge number. Uh, we almost we had um, four losing trades and five winning trades, which, which helped us with our profit loss statement. But we were four times better almost on our winners than we were on our losers. Okay? And it drills into that a little bit more as we're kind of evaluating this performance report. Um, five total trades. Three of those were on the long side. Okay? Two of those were on the short side. Our average profit when we traded was about 307 bucks although our maximum profit was 1000 okay, and our lowest profit was $12.24. Okay. Unprofitable trades, four. Okay, so we had less losers than winners, which is good. Our average loss when we traded was all minus $81. Our highest loss was 134 versus 1000 uh, and our lowest loss was $10.44, which was pretty comparable to this $12 one. Okay. Now, I'd want to test actually a lot more data. Um, <laughs> we can go back a lot further than what we've done, but I wanted to be able to run this test and have you actually be able to look at it and not spend a lot of time waiting for the performance report to come back. But we could literally, where I set that 250, you could go back four years, you could go back 10 years, you could go back to the inception of the, the prices with a lot of them. So here we go. We have uh, our buy and hold index. This measures how much, how well we did from profit versus if we just bought and held. Now remember, we made money trading. We would have lost money holding. So obviously we did about 312% better by doing a trade or a, a trading methodology here. Okay. Our risk, our profit loss index, again, that's the measurement of how much money we risked. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a measurement of how much our profits were versus our losses when we had drawdowns. And we were at 83%. Okay? Now, that, that scale goes from minus 100 to plus 100. Okay? And minus, or so 83 is actually a very, very good number then. Reward risk index, um, that's an important thing that we want to talk about. That measures how much risk versus the reward that we've got in the marketplace. Uh, basically, it also goes from minus 100 to 100. So from 86.79 is actually a very, very good number to have on there. Here we've got some accounting um, um, uh, average trade length. So for our profitable trades, we were in the market for about 17 bars, or 17 days in this case. The longest amount of period uh, we were in a bar within uh, the market for was, with this system was 37 bars. Okay? Our shortest trade length was one trade, <laughs> one day we were in the market. Our total translate, so total trade length, or so in other words, the whole time we were in a trade based on a winning trade, out of that 250 bars was 86, okay? So 86 days we made uh, more money buying and holding than we would have holding the whole time on buy and hold, okay? It has the same metrics versus for our, long, our losing trades. These would be our unprofitable timing, 
on average, we only held on to a loser about two days. Uh, the longest we were in a trade that was going against us was four days. Our shortest that we were in a trade that was against us was one. So if we added those numbers up, 86 um, plus 9, basically, we'd have 95. Okay, So we were only, based on this methodology, we were only really at risk in the market or in an open position for that uh, 95 days out of the 250 days that we tested. Okay, So that's a measurement of what we like to call trade efficiency, which comes back over here. Basically, if we can make money faster by being in the market uh, than just staying in the market on a buy and hold that's going to lose us money anyway, it's a measurement of, of how much money we can make how fast. And so I'd say to be in the trade for 95 days and make a profit of about 17% is going to be a lot more effective than being in the market for 250 days and losing money. So these are kind of the metrics that you're going to look at uh, when you're looking to evaluate a system test. And I would say that this is uh, so far something that I would say is very, very promising. Okay. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.